Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Under my skin I tried so Not to give in I said to myself This affair Never will go so well what do you got going here, man? Ah, so this is the new Daisy DAC that's now in production. Dual this is going to be AK-4499 base DAC with eight mono op amps. Right now we have the Sparkos 3601s installed. Um, you're going to have multiple options in the back. I guess everybody's calling it a distribution DAC. Um, you're going to have your your uh, dual set of XLR, so your balance outputs. You're okay. going to have four sets of RCAs. Okay. Um, Four spit ifs, which are going to be two toss links, two uh, uh, coaxials. Okay. Then you're going to have a toss link and coax output, okay. USB input, and then an AES input. Um, AES EBU input? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yeah, your balanced digital. Okay. Um, and then from there, you're going to have, uh, in the front, we made it it's super clean. You, so select your input and your yes, order. and the new and everybody who knows Jashelli will understand. Thank you for uh, <laughs> for finally making the buttons make sense and clean. So we <laughs> did it as clean as we could. And what is this going to cost? What does this cost? This is going to start at thirteen hundred with the oh. with the base wood, which is oak. You know, you get the wood case, uh, and it goes up from there depending on your wood selection. And you were saying something like nineteen. 99? What's 99? Yes, sir. So that's the, the uh, DAC chip we're using. So we're oh, using see. dual mono setup of the AK-4499. And so it can do 9624 and what, what words? Yes, sir. It can go, so through SPDIF, it can go up to 192, 24, okay. and then uh, in USB, it can go up to 384, I think the number is, uh, 32. Okay. okay. So basically all your high-res stuff is right. fine. And, it's, and, it also, oh, and it also does DSD 512. Okay, good. So it's, the price is very reasonable. $1,300? $1,300, yes, $1, yeah. yeah, and you get the custom wood case. Okay, cool. Thank you. System's great. Uh, we've got the right now. We're running the VAC 170 IQ integrated, which is 80 watts per side. Uh, what does that cost? That is in the 12k range. Okay. <clears throat> All critical mass racks, and then for source, at the moment we're using the Lumen P1, which is everything. It's got a preamp built in, DAC streamer combo, everything. So are you playing a CD now or streaming? You're streaming. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. But that doesn't have a transport in it of any kind, right? Uh, it had just a network transport. Okay, okay. And that's an outstanding unit. You know, it has the lead processing and all that. It's, it's very, very good. And what does that cost? The P1? What does the P1 run? Retail. Hmm? Retail. Retail. 10000 10, for the unit. And what is that? That's the L1 from Lumen. We're currently using that as essentially a... A network filter. Oh, okay. So with eight terabytes, it's fifty-five hundred. Oh, yeah. That's that's a lot. Of, that'll store a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Eight terabytes. Oh yeah, plenty. It's a it's a you know it's a great server. And then uh, we've also got the Hegel Viking CD player down in the bottom right there. Okay. Yeah, I saw that introduced last year, I think. Yes, it's out. In a secret introduction. Now you have it. It's in your. It's in production and selling now. It is. And then you've got the Shinyata. Um, Shinyata Iger, which is uh, new. This unit is outstanding. We're using that for all the power conditioning at the moment. And also from Shinyata, we're running their Altera ground system down right. here, which I'm familiar with, and that works really well. It's outstanding. Okay. And that's why you got. Well, we've got the speakers. The yes. speakers are the Claris Audio Minuets, uh, designed in Switzerland. Just made, these, these are made in Vietnam, right? Made in yeah. Vietnam, designed in Switzerland. And what does this cost? These are 46 for the pair. 46K. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
and uh, yeah, I mean, the room's been great for us so far. Yeah. Very coherent, very cohesive. I'm gonna grab this, except for you. But I'm, except for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm so sorry, let me take this way. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I was just making a joke at your expense. That's all right. Better at your expense than my expense, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when, run me through your room. Sounds good. Um, so this is a metronome uh, SACD player Aqua 2. Uh, it supports SACD and you can use it as a transport or standalone DAC. And there's a built-in streamer as well. And there's a button which is a tube output stage. Oh. So um, you can uh, switch it to, uh, between solid state or tube output stage. A different flavor of stuff. And where's that made? Uh, this is made in uh, France. France. And what does that cost? 24000 Okay. And then we have the Caron Acoustic Electronics, the preamp and the power amp. Uh, and this stereo amp has 450 watt at 8 ohm, pure class A, so it's really powerful. Mm. Uh, this is from Serbia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we have some Antrek ground boxes um, over here. Uh, and these ones are from uh, Sweden. There are binding posts at the back, and then you can use a ground cable to connect the chassis of your equipment or the the RC ground. That's the latest no latest innovation in our business, and it, and it works, and it's crazy yeah, that no yeah. one thought of it before, which is... It works really well. And okay. the, the good thing about it is that it improves the clarity, uh, lower the noise flow without changing the sound character of your system. Yep, that's what these things do. And what else we got? And uh, we have a critical mass racks over here, um, and some cables from uh, Phono Acoustica. Uh, this is a brand uh, based in Spain. Spain. I've reviewed some yep. of their stuff over the years. Very, yeah. very, very musical. And then we got the Vimbert Mino loudspeakers over here. Uh, they're from Germany. And you're using uh, Accuton drivers. And what are those cost per pair? Uh, 40,000. 40,000? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you've done done well. You, you know the prices, you know the products. What more could I ask you for? <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. You know why, just you and I know true love why. This is the latest Honeywa system. And a new cartridge. The cartridge has an extremely long cantilever too. So. Okay, John, what do we got here? Hi, Michael. Uh, we're uh, we're focusing at this show on our PD-151 Mark II turntable. Just won a number of awards, and, uh, highly reviewed in various magazines. Okay. Our L507Z uh, integrated amplifier, also uh, the latest uh, generation integrated amp model from Luxman, and the DO3X uh, CD player with uh, addressable DAC. And it and, uh, plays SACD also? Or it's not SACD, it's just CD. It's our, this is our entry level uh, CD. And what does that player. cost? Uh, $4,400. And the integrated? $89.95 retail. And uh, $6,400 with the cover. Okay, but not the cartridge? But not the cartridge. Okay. This, at this show, we're using a, uh, an Audio Technica cartridge. Okay. Since our, our dealer partner here is an Audio Technica dealer, makes so complete sense. To focus on it. Okay, so Gary, you've got a new speaker you're introducing at this show in Florida. We are, Michael. Greetings from Tampa. We are launching for the first time in the world of consumers. We did do a trade show launch at CES, our Ultra Evolution series of speakers. Three towers, most expensive ones are 5,000 a pair. Two bookshelves, most expensive ones are 1,100 a pair. And then ancillary center channel and height effect speakers. But we're showing them in two channel, and it's really been gratifying to see all these seasoned audiophiles in Tampa talking about what they're hearing. So Jeff, so you are the, the North American Metaxas distributor, of distributor and importer and distributor. I am. You are. And let's see what we got here at the show. Sure. 
Welcome. So we brought over uh, from Europe, we brought over the Siren loudspeakers. These are Costas's second from his top of the line dynamic driver speakers. Do you play them or do you have sex with them? Which, which comes first? I think it's really up to the owner. Okay. Um, we did put a port on them, so. Yes, <laughs> that's true. I see. Okay. Um, and then we have these reel to reel players, of course, that have been talked about. Um, these are the Tourbillon. Uh, reel to reel players, um, and then we have two of them here. And the Papillon will be here for the Axpona show. That is absolutely a beautiful machine. And then we have his integrated amp, the Solid. And amp. this records and plays back, or just plays back? This one's playback only, but it can be configured with record and erase heads. So people can record their CDs and make it a tape and say, I've got this off the master tape. There's so much of that floating around I this show. It's don't just, do just that. ridiculous. You have enough of that in the marketplace. Uh, and then this is his integrated amp, the Solitaire, and it's a 150 watt class AB solid state amp, uh, carved from a solid block of aluminum, weighs 70 pounds. And are, are these made in Greece? Where are these made? Or he's in uh, Australia, right? Well, he's Australian, yeah. Greek descent. Uh, right. Has his headquarters in the Netherlands, and his laboratory in just outside Athens, Greece. Oh, so he's, he's internationally flavored. He is all over. And okay. uh, always busy, dreaming up something. Of and course. Fever dream. And this is. That's the, again the tourbillon. Same way. Just a different color. Different color. Yes. And wh what does this machine cost? That's forty nine thousand. Okay. As configured. And it is uh, again, I mean, in terms of sources, this is about as good as we can do right now for real to real tape. Yep. In terms of transparency. I just wish the major labels would open up the vaults to tapes so that we, they could be copied and, and, and... Well, you know what, maybe you and I ought to work on that. We'll work on it. Okay. Okay. Um, but what do, what do these speakers cost, by the uh, way? The speakers are 128000 a pair. You play something for me? I would be glad to. Right. I'll play a little uh, Sarah Vaughan. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, this is the... This is Metaxas's latest. This is called the, the Woke Headphone System. Ah. No, it's not called the Woke Headphone System. What is this called? It's called the Ethereal. The Ethereal. ethereal electrostatic head. It rhymes system. with venereal. Oh, did I say that? I'm sorry, I said you that. You may have said it, but you can edit that out. I, no, uh, I won't. That, that's too good to edit out. Uh, but it is a dual mono electrostatic headphone amp, separate transformers, two separate amplifiers inside the chassis, and obviously separate left and right volume controls that are that are controlled right here in the chest area. I'm a star, I can do whatever I want. I can touch anything, nobody cares. Oh, this is a legal product. Okay. <laughs> it sounds really, really great, and you know, obviously controversial looks, but it's beautiful. It's object you're objectifying uh, headphones. I try, <laughs> I really think a nice set of cans are beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll quote you on that, okay. That's, that's fun. We're, we're just having fun here, folks. We're having fun. I think so. Yeah. I'm Fritz Delmos from Audio Group Denmark. Okay. Welcome to our room. Thank you. Uh, we are playing our system in here that consists of our new Axis 42. That's an integrated amplifier with a great Class A uh, headphone amp and a streamer and a DAC on board. So everything in one box. And what does that cost? That cost 8000 Really? Yeah. So the amplifier that's driving the speakers is, is Class D amplifier? It's uh, what we call a UMAC output stage, but it's a Class D technology. Okay. But not with a switch mode power supply. This oh. is a resonance power supply, so it's much, much, much lower noise. Ah, oh. okay. That's interesting. And on the two shelves underneath, on the lower shelf, you have our mains 8. This one is the A3 version. And what is that? This is about distribution of power and ground. Oh, okay. And taking out a whole lot of noise that are coming in from the mains. Yep. And on the next shelf we have a box doing more or less the same, but this one is for the network. So that means that when you're connected to the World Wide Web, you're getting a whole lot of noise in because you're connected to everybody out there. That's so right. So this one cleans out a whole lot of noise and can also distribute your LAN cables. Okay. And what do those two boxes cost? Uh, they are around 3000 each. Okay. That's kind of where we see the magic coming from. I've heard a lot about those two products from a friend of mine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're great. He says it's great. It's ridiculous what it does. 
Why, should it, why I, should it do anything? <laughs> it's digital. It's perfect. Nothing should change. Oh, okay, come I, on. I, you know I, how I, I know it is. <laughs> it's not <laughs> ones and zeros floating through yeah, a cable. It's, it's I, I yeah, know. It's still uh, an analog uh, signal, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now let's talk about the speakers. Well, well, this, is a, this, is a, this is one of our latest. This one is the Burson X2. Uh, we brought out the X line with the X3 first last year. And now we have follower up. So we now got an X6. And now on this show, we are playing the X2 in this room. And on the other room across the hall, we are playing the latest. That's the small monitor, the X1. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a stand, stand monitor. That's a stand yeah. mount. And so yeah. what, are, what are these cost? These cost uh, 88. 88. 100. 100. Oh, yeah. that's. Yeah. I, I was thinking you were going to say the, with the extra zero. <laughs> no, on it. there's oh. so much bigger for your money here. Yeah, that, that is so much speaker for your money. This is, uh, this is where we have intended to produce a very elegant, it's rather slim speaker. But as you probably have heard, it's very powerful. Yeah, a lot of bottom in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever directly at something should always point to about 15 degrees off axis to get the best, best experience. Is the outside of the uh, Yeah, usually a little bit, little bit to the outside of what we normally do. Oh, really? Yeah, if you, um, whoever wants to sit, the, center, uh, the white ones, the larger ones, the concentric models, yes. Uh, the, uh, the amps there are 1750 each. That's a stereo. Yeah, we have a little sheet that has all the pricing on it. Yeah, it does have all the prices and the model numbers of everything in the system. I got cut. And it's all special. Uh, well, there's always an incentive not to bring stuff on, is what I would say. <laughs> if we don't have to ship it back home, there's always deals to be had on Sunday nights at the show. So That's a hint. So the it is a hint. Are, the are half the price. Yeah, they're $3,500. How do they sound? They sound great, and we'll switch over to those usually about every hour. Or I'll switch oh. over. So these are powered speakers, right? Yeah, they're powered. Uh, powerful marketing speaker, built-in back, built-in room correction for REW. All you done is power cord and two Ethernet cables. Oh. Of course, power cords these days can cost eight thousand dollars a piece. So then you're in a lot of for a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So fifteen grand, you're done. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're we're in the sub drum drum room with Larry, Larry Maroney, and this is your this is your invention. Yeah, this is my invention. Uh, our company. Uh, we put this together about three years ago. Okay, so so this is your idea. Yeah, and, and you're uh, Larry Maroney, and you started this a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, uh, right after around COVID time. When yeah, everybody you had nothing to do, so you said let's do. let's drop a yeah. coaxial speaker into a drum head. Exactly. Well, I first started with the subwoofer. Oh, I see. Uh, I had a spare subwoofer. I had a spare drum kit, kick in my uh, studio and I happen to have a 18 inch speaker I dropped it in there and uh, the rest is history uh, found a way to suspend it in the head and then we found ways to isolate the vibration further and be able to make a coffee table out of it and that's not a powered woofer right you have to power no, uh, it no that's this, your little amplifier that little amp right there is powering the whole system S the whole system yeah it's got a hundred watt subwoofer powered subwoofer out and uh, 50 watts per channel for the uh, stereo pair. And so the, these are your satellite 
speakers. The, yeah, you want to call them satellite speakers. They're front of house, really. Yeah. You know? And they're eight inch coaxial with Kevlar drivers. Silk One inch silk dome tweeters. Okay. Yeah. And these are port they're in the back? Port in the back, yep. Okay. That's that pretty. Helps with the efficiency. And actually tuned them really nice. So the whole idea, again, is to not get the vibrations from the speaker frame. Going and do you troll cabinet. Goodwills to find used drum sets? <laughs> with, or how do you we have, but no, we're, these are all brand new kits. Oh, I see. Okay. What we do is we buy a complete kit from the different manufacturers, either Yamaha or PDP, which is DW. And let DW me, is one of the biggest brands out there. And let me ask you this question. Do, do different drum sets have better sound and worse sound than one we, another? In this class of uh, Drum shells, we haven't noticed any significant difference between a Yamaha, a Ludwig, or a, or a DW. Okay, so, uh, so this one is a full range That's your full thing. system, yeah, that comes with an amp, same okay. amplifier. And, and this one over here? Is an all-in-one. That's an even more compact system because you've got... And is that a stereo? Is that stereo? It's, so stereo, it's a single point stereo system for smaller spaces. Um, you. The back end of that has an 18-inch subwoofer. Oh. Yeah, so if you can get back and behind there, if you want to take a quick peek. So that thing must go crazy when you power it up. <laughs> and it's a heavy beast. How do you how do you move these around? You got you have crates for them that they fit in and. This guy right here. This guy right here. He's on diesel jerk. That's, that's your guy. I mean, he helps, but I try not to let him. You can't, I mean, you yeah. can't pick one of these up by yourself, Absolutely right? Absolutely can. You can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a person. I would not suggest it to... Not to me, no. Yeah. I mean, you got to be able to deadlift 68 pounds. Yeah. Okay. But it's not just that. It's the unwieldiness of a... It's weird. Yeah, yeah. So it's a yeah. weird grip. Too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you grab it right, you can do it. Yeah. It's, oh, that's not bad. It's yeah. not bad. No. It's not bad. And then, and then you walk like this for the next 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's true. Okay. Well, some people here walk that way anyway, it so it doesn't work. work. That's true. It can work. That's right. That's another issue. All right. This is interesting. Okay. Did you give me the price of these things? Yeah. Uh, this one's nineteen ninety five. Okay. That's one thousand nine hundred. I think yeah. I, I knew it wasn't nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. I knew it wasn't nineteen thousand nine ninety five. Well, so I just some assumed. people have asked us that question. Because you're at a high fi show. Know, so everything's expensive. Okay. And then they're uh, gonna hate me for saying that. Yeah. This okay. system is uh, twenty one ninety five. Oh. Okay. For the two, the two, those the two, two speakers plus the sub oh. and the amp. Okay. So it's you know it's a good value. It's interesting. Thank you. Thank oh, you for showing welcome. me this. Thank you. It was a train that took me away from here. Train can't bring me It's all class D. Yeah. Right. Gallium nitride. Yep. So this, the speakers are? The speakers are Soundfield Audio 1212 OB, and they're being powered by two amps, uh, the Orchard Audio Star Crimson Stereo Ultra. That's a 500 watt uh, stereo amp that's on the middle shelf there. Right. And then the two monoblocks that are underneath the streamer, they're 150 watt uh, Class D gallium nitride amplifiers. And then finally, the Pecan Pie Plus Streamer Premium on top. Uh, it's a streamer, DAC, preamplifier, and headphone amp. Oh, so the amps are actually below that below that streamer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're very they're very compact. Yep. So what is the cost of this whole setup? Approximately? About thirteen thousand. Oh really? The whole thing? Yeah. Oh, that's good.
So our system, our digital front, uh, our digital source, starts with uh, the synergistic research router, which is, which is creating uh, the network for, for our okay. system. Basically. Are there four of them? What is so it? we have our router here that's creating the network, our switch here that is dispersing those signals, Okay. and then these are actually two linear power supplies. One is powering okay. all of our bases, and the other is powering our NAS drive that, okay. that's, uh, okay. that the file storage is on. Uh, all that is tied into our Voodoo server, which the is new, the new that? synergistic research uh, music server over there. That's with to the top piece? Yep. Okay. Correct. We are running two units. Um, one is acting as the rune core. The other is acting as the bridge, sending the uh, signal to the DAC. All right. So, you, so you're bypassing their own nucleus we're thing. using one as kind of like a nucleus, as the core. Kind of like, but it's not, you're not using their computer. We're not using no. their okay, nucleus, right. no. Okay, no. okay. But it is a uh, Rune software on there, yes. Yes, okay. And then uh, we have the Ideon DAC and the Ideon reclocker below that. Okay. Feeding over to the JMF audio preamp and stereo amp below it. And everything is powered by our new uh, well, by Synergistic Research Power Conditioning, we have our new PowerSol 8 SX up, up front. Okay. This is brand new, starting to ship uh, next month. Handling the amp and preamp. Yep. And then we have a Galileo PowerSol uh, powering right. everything else. We built the most robust PC we could to act as a server. Right. Okay. And we listened to different RAM chips, you know, blind testing, different CPUs, different motherboards. Right. Then we took our technology that built all these other products, power supplies, and built it into the server. Okay. We took the uh, active ground block, the ground filter, built that into the server. We built an electromagnetic cell that eliminates the high frequency noise, the operating frequency of the CPU and the RAM. People assume that the compression in the sound field is inherent to the digital process. I think it's more a byproduct of the high frequency noise, noise yeah. from the components that so make up the do you, How do you get noise out? That you filter it out. No, we don't filter it out. We replace... I'm very much into shift or, or parrying energy. Instead of blocking, I'd rather redirect it. Okay. And so we use harmonics of the Earth's Schumann resonance as the new clocking frequencies. Okay. All the, Around 8.3 hertz is the Schumann resonance. There's, right there's different variations. And then there's different ways to do it, and that's what that's the proprietary part. Okay. But essentially, we get rid of the really nasty high frequency noise, and we enable you to replace it with the one that you respond best to. Okay. Which you were hearing out in there, out there when you were listening. Makes complete sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Right. Yeah. I know about that. Yeah. And and the other thing that people don't realize, you know, everybody says you have to have a dedicated line for your AC. You absolutely must have a dedicated network for your stereo. You right. can't have anything else That's on the huge. network. That, because all the noise from all your crappy components everywhere in your house are going to work their way through that network. It, it, it's like a virus, and it's going to infect yes. every circuit in your system. What if you convert the Ethernet signal to a um, optical signal? Break all the ground crap out of it. We do that with our with our switches, yeah. but we feel that the switches offer better subjective performance than switching from electric to, to light to the lighter. Right. Yeah, I, we, we find it's more Because that's how I bring my 4K picture into my room and it's, it's fantastic. And people use our switches for yeah. video as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're doing here. So when you push the button, what are you doing when you, you, you're turning it off? We're ch no, we're changing the, we're either, yeah, we're turning it on and we're turning when that, it off. When the light's off, it's off. It's off. So the thing's still working. Go watch. So it's see it going red, you, see, so you can see up there. That's a different bias. Oh, it's I a see. a different bias. It's like an electromagnetic cartridge. So then you the sit there and cartridge. decide which oh. one you like better? Do you, do you, yeah. Does it depend upon what music you're playing? Do you go crazy like that? Yeah. You can go crazy. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or you can find one that you prefer. You Usually I'm just in the mood for blue. We rolled a suite of technologies that we've developed for other products into this. Okay. Is it redundant to say now it's in here, it's in there, it's in the other thing, you're paying for it three times? Is no, that because when we turn e each of them off, individual of the others, you see, you hear a degradation in the sound quality. And okay. they're additive. Yeah. Okay. There's no such thing as everything's perfect. And so what does this uh, server cost here? 15,000. 15K for the Com server? Com comes with our Euphoria SX power cable, which is a $3,500 power cable. Okay. But you, so you have an app that works this? You, yeah, you'd have a Rune, you'd download Rune on and your cell phone you or right. app. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're using an iPad in here. Okay, all right. You can run an internal drive. My personal favorite is a NAS drive. Okay. And everything. That's what I've, I've got all my stuff on a SSD and NAS drive. Yeah. 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 They the think message. I'm only vinyl and analog, but that's <laughs> not true. Okay, so what do we what do you got here in the dark in the dark room? Well, what we have, well, let's start at the front end. Okay. So we've got in, uh, a uh, Inuus Pulsar and the Zen Mini. That's uh, that's our uh, that's her server. Okay, there's two black boxes that we can't really see, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. All right, and then what? And then we're using the Esoteric Ko5. Uh, CD player as our DAC. Okay. And we are feeding balanced out of the DAC into the Pass Labs uh, XP22 line stage. That's the two chassis line stage. Okay. And that's feeding the Pass uh, 260.8 AB monoblocks, a pair of them, of course. Okay. And we are driving the new Magico S3. Technically, the S3 Mark III. What did they do to make it new? Well, I would. That's that's going to be a uh, proprietary secret. That's going to be a proprietary secret. But I'm, but I'm sure you'll pry it out of them. I will try. Yes, I'm, and you'll be successful too. Be my and what are those? What are the speakers cost? Uh, forty-five five. Forty-five five. All right. And what is the what is the preamp cost? Uh, we're looking at roughly ten thousand on the preamp. Okay. And the, the monologues? Fourteen to fifty on the on the power amps. Each. No, a pair. A pair. Oh, that's very reasonable. In this world. In this world. In yeah. this world. Okay. And the cables cost more than everything. Uh, cables cost more. So this is uh, Nordos Valhalla's. All right. Okay. How does it all sound? It sounds okay. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. Okay. I, I think these speakers... You guys, you guys happy with the sound of this? this is, you enjoying it? And I've gotten in your way and blocked everything you were doing, so I'll... I think you're following me, though. But, uh, you're following me? Yeah, you're following me. Oh, I'm, I'm following you. Don't let anybody know that. Okay, so I'll sit down and listen to music now, right? Absolutely. And I thank you very much. Michael, always a pleasure. Thank you for stopping in. You bet. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm we, lost. We go back decades. Yeah. Lord. Yes, we do. We do. Let me tell me about the room. Yeah, we uh, we have uh, uh, one of our most expensive speakers uh, called the M3, and the M3s are retail for two hundred eighty thousand dollars a pair. So uh, we have a big sister twin called the M6, which is uh, more or less twice as much. We have uh, the latest driver technology in the M6. Uh, we do have really advanced uh, drivers. The, uh, the mid-range drivers are, are uh, open battery, so they look directly straight into the room. And it's a two and a half way system. So uh, a mid-range driver works down to around 160 hertz, where we have a, a roll-off acoustic roll-off of the drivers. So are these two mid-range drivers? That's two mid-range drivers. Napolito kind of configuration? Yeah. Okay. And the two lower ones are the bass drivers working up to around 240 hertz. How do you get so much deep bass out of two drivers that size? Um, it's about quality. <laughs> you know, a driver has the, the, have to work as perfect pistonic wise as you can. Yeah, smaller the better, right? Yeah. The problem when you have bigger drivers is they're wobbling, as I call it. 
It means when you have a transient, we are listening in transient. So when you have transient, doing this, the rest of the cone is flexing like this the whole time. And that means most drivers, even 12 or 15 inches, actually, when it comes to a transient only, use more or less the same area as you have four and a half. We have uh, had the laser technology looking at 8, 10, or 12, uh, 14, uh, 15 inches, and you'll not believe how much they are, they are wobbling, as I call it. Also, we have mass. I mean, we have a, the membrane, uh, the cone on, on these drivers are around 5 grams, and that's half of the, the weight of any other 4.5 inch in Yeah. It's a, a spread through carbon driver, but on a, we have a skin layer of titanium. It's 400, 400 of a millimeter thick. The skin is titanium? Yeah. How titanium. do they get the titanium skin? Is it deposition or is it? No, it's glued to the epoxy. Mm -hmm. We do uh, these cones in-house. So one day when it comes to see us in Denmark, and you are welcome, you know that. That'd be great. Uh, so uh, you'll, you'll see how, actually, how crazy we are. <laughs> so these drivers are hand-built to the highest quality, but it's a pistonic movement. You know, there is materials that this are sounding good, and titanium is one of them. And uh, it's a crazy thing about material because materials we like sounds good. Yep. Yeah, it does. And what is the cabinet made out of? It's made in a composite material. Uh, there's uh, uh, only 147 different kind of MDFs. Uh, Wilson are using the best. It's called compact laminate. They call it X material, but it's compact laminate. Yep. Uh, we don't dare to do that uh, because when you have a, a speaker in, in warm climates with high uh, humidity, you can have issues. We use the second best, okay. but uh, we make all drivers in any of our speakers in-house, yeah. and that's our strength. Okay. Uh, the heart of any speaker is, of course, the quality of your tweeter, and um, it's where ours are different from what is anyone else. It's a ribbon tweeter? It's a ribbon planner. It's uh, attached to all four sides. I'll show you the next okay. column. Here. So uh, it's uh, one, one hundredth of a millimeter thick, and the weight of the red triangle piece here is one, one hundredth of a gram. Yeah. And that's a moving mass between 50 hundredths times less than any moving system in a dome tweeter. Hmm. It uh, have efficiency because we have three neodymium N52 magnets in, in the back. So the tweeter have an efficiency of 940 dB. So it's, there's two magnets in the back? Three. Three magnets yeah. in the back. So we have one in the center of here, and we have two to the side. And with, with this kind of light mass and this yeah. kind of speed, you yeah. the, the other drivers can't be big, and they can't be heavy, otherwise it doesn't play. Uh, I mean, I think we are one of the only who have are successful having a ribbon planner together with a driver. So of course you have to make lightning fast drivers to follow up. Yeah, yeah, otherwise it falls yeah. apart. But also, you know, we, uh, any of our speakers, when it comes to the towers, are two and a half way systems, and we still work for right away. When it's three way or four way system, you have an issue, because uh, when you go from the mid range to the treble, you have a phase shift of 180 degrees over time. And that means the energy in the music is not right. <coughs> That's why we have the two and a half way system. Yeah. It get rid of that problem. So you more crossover parts you have. I mean, crossovers anyway is filtered, so you don't want to have more of them than necessary. Yeah. So uh, that's the heart of, of any of our speakers. See how, how light it is. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, a silk dome, don't you have issues by nature? You take the soft silk domes, they have uh, around around 40 to uh, 50 percent more moving mass than we have, with a much smaller intake. But what it means is that the need, when people are talking about high risk like crazy, don't treat us, cannot, sorry, they are not able to. I mean, they can play a 50 kilohertz uh, sinus wave, right. but that's not music. No. So, uh, so cost of the mass, they need a higher level of signal before they can move, and uh, when it comes to beryllium and diamond, they are around 100 times more moving mass. But the shift domes are also breaking up in the audible bands, and you hear them. Yeah. They're breaking up typically around 10 to 12 kilohertz. Uh, this one breaks up, uh, simulated to 82 kilohertz. And what's the dispersion characteristics of that? Well, like uh, the same size of a dome tweeter. So that's like one and a half inches. Okay. So yeah. yeah, that's okay. why it's a tweeter, the speaker.
Sounds good. Let's play something else. Yeah. Play so, some. You have some, some symphonic music. Of course we have. That's what I would like to hear. Yeah, we can hear that after us. So to the left we have uh, the top of line our PM file is called C eight hundred and eighty, um, and that one have a, a built-in uh, uh, analog crossover. So that means we are running the speakers by amp right now. Oh. So we can adjust it to more or less any room, including your own, yeah. to work uh, in difficult conditions. And it's, an, it's, an, and it's an analog crossover. Yeah. So there's no but DSP involved in it. We hate that. Good. You know, because you have a processing time, uh, maybe 20 uh, milliseconds, and our brain can easily. it. That's, that. that's right. Yeah. So no, no, it's not allowed in the product we make. Okay. So it's analog, but it's uh, both the high pass and the low pass filter. You can move both in different directions. So if you have a, let's say, a base issue around 80 hertz in your room, <laughs> I mean, then uh, you can move the high pass filter up and uh, the low pass filter up and roll it off, so you don't have the issue. Yeah. So when it comes to implementing uh, our M3s and M6s, uh, they will work in any room course of this. Yeah. Yeah. The, our integrated amplifier works exactly the same. The i 880 also have it implemented. So that's something we have. And what does that cost? It's uh, 70,000 US dollars okay. for each of them. To the right, we have our new streamer deck. And uh, it's, another, it's another ladder deck, one bit. It's a continuum. Deck, which means uh, we bring the DSD uh, 512 up to 22.3 megahertz. And we, because the DSD contains the analog signal, and that means that uh, if you fill it in a proper way, and we do that from around 100,000 kilohertz and up, so it's a, uh, in this case, there will be, when you do it right, only an analog signal back. <laughs> and that's of course, uh, also from now on in the future, you'll see that kind of deck. And how much does that cost? The same, 70,000. 70,000, okay. Then, of course, we are bi amping. We have uh, two share amp uh, called P880, and they're also 70,000 apiece. They are running pure class A. So, there are 250 watts class A in 8 ohms. They deliver 500 watts in 4 ohms, 920 watts in 2 ohms, stable down in 1 ohm, and have only a damping factor of 16,000. That's what you have in front of you. And you, but you could run these speakers not by amp. Yeah, yeah, you can run yeah, them yeah, yeah. Uh, with a by cable. And below you have. Uh, we have to the left on the lower shelf. We have our power distribution bar, and that's the top of line, our DCC gold signature. And uh, to the on the other shelf, to the left on the other shelf, we have our Ethernet uh, switch, the top of line of those, and that's a heart of of streaming doing it right. I've heard about that. Yeah, I've heard that. That's. Yeah. Pretty yeah. amazing. That's what I've heard. Uh, we are, I mean, as you are, I am a violin figure. We have our discussion, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all in general. With you. I don't disagree with you, but it's still about uh, what uh, what is your violin? What where does it come from? To the right, we have the power box to activate our noise cancellation, which we call uh, DITA and Tesla technology. Right. Uh, so that's also where we have this extremely low noise floor, as you have heard. And on top, these are the handles. What you pick the unit up with this handle? Oh, that's no, that's a resonator. <laughs> yeah. No, every, anything will have equal problems, not only in the in the chassis going down, but also up. Yeah. You know, from former oh, yeah. days, oh, yeah. Wilson from Totem have his uh, floor standards where he have uh, this aluminium thing device on the top, and when he remove it, the whole thing collapsed. Yeah. When you put them back, it's opening up. Yes, I've heard, I've heard things like so, that. So, uh, yeah. so any. Uh, any material you and you play have. those are placed on there. They, they, it doesn't come in the. It doesn't come with that. No, no, bolted that's, in. Uh, that's something. So you you pick it up. I'm not going to pick it up. No, no. This one is made in Sikorino, and we have a weak spot. And you can see the drivers on, on the speakers, uh -huh. and that's, uh, I think, by far the most advanced drivers ever made, but also the most costly. One. And what cabling are you using? Top of line. It's our gold signature. It's signature. your own. Your own cable. Everything you see, is all right? Everything is ours, including that. Poster, because I've seen that's that. A, that's a, the Leaf Fjord, the yeah. Fjord crossing from east to west where we live. We have Alba to the left and uh, Sumbi to the right. right. So, um, so that covers everything, right? Yes. All right. Okay, I'll take it. I'll write a check. Come on. <laughs> I'll take your bank account. <laughs> you, you'll, you'll need my, my house, my bank account, <laughs> my car, exactly. my dogs. You'll I'll need show everything. you a driver, Mike, because I'm uh, the four and a half inch driver. Yeah. 
So this is uh, the driver in our speakers. So uh, uh, it's a driver without any iron, and we have a pattern on it. Normally, you have an iron pole fish here, yeah. here, and a magnet here. So what do you have? We have neodymium N52. It's around six or eight times stronger than normal neodymium. So outside, we have two rings. We push north for uh, against north for again against the silver uh, ring. Inside, we're doing south pole against south pole. These are the strongest magnets available, around six to eight times stronger than normal neodymium. Oh. When it comes to a conductivity, silver is better than copper. So that reduced the, the, uh, the inductance by six to eight oh. percent. This is a skin in titanium. And uh, it's a spectro which we have on our least expensive, our new X1s, and are using more or less the same technology. It starts to trickle down, but this is a, a titanium skin there. So uh, then this basket is uh, sweet printed in, uh, in Siconium. And that's maybe uh, the most costly driver ever made because you have one pound of pure silver in it. Machine, we, we, uh, and that's what we can see when it comes to see us. Each driver has one pound of silver in it? Yeah. That's crazy. We know. <laughs> But it's also know that this driver, compared to what you use, have only around 8% of the inductance. Oh, so that explains So it. all the cables inside, all the crossover parts, the magnet motor systems, and so on, have been in cryo, they have been frozen down to minus 196 degrees yeah. in a, in a nitro, uh, fluid nitrogen. And that reduced the inductance even further, around 6 to 8%. So this motor system here have only the in, in uh, Eight percent of inductions in any other dynamic driver on the market. So it's a piece of high It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So uh, very unusual. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> the the tweezer. Oh, I have it over there. You can see how we are also using the, the neodymium N52 magnet. So we have it there. So we have this uh, rectangular piece, and that's a piece we have the weight of one, 100 sophic gram cool mass. So that's the tweeter in its enclosure and yeah. Where, yeah. These are neodymium N52, and we have one in the middle and one to the other side. So the efficiency here is uh, only 90-40B efficiency on this tweeter. And what's the efficiency? Well, the whole system's efficiency. The is efficiency on this is around 89 dB. But then, 89 dB. Yeah, but they're easy load because they never drop below 6 ohms. So it's easy load. Never? No. Ne oh, so it's no. easy to drive. Yeah, but also when you have an inductance, you don't have the resonance peak in the base, yeah. which you normally have. Yeah. But lower inductance you have, we have a li like in peaks uh, around 99 uh, ohm or something like that. that. That means that your amps never lose control. Yeah. If, uh, most speakers out there have maybe an impedance of 16 or even further of 25, it's not unusual. Yeah. And that means when you have such a high impedance, you have a problem because you amplify loose control. Yeah, so yeah. you want to you keep it below 8 ohms? It's around 8, 9 dB, depending yeah. on yeah. what speaker is. Okay. So that's, this was actually a round trip in our world. It's a very advanced product, obviously. Very, very advanced product. Yeah. What are, what are all these? These are resonance controlling devices. Oh. And we have them in, in different materials. These are standard steel grade 316. These are, well, we, and we have uh, titanium ball banks here. In, uh, and where do you put these under, under products? Yeah, under your amp, under your speakers, under anything. These, have, these are standard steel. These are titanium treated in a, in a, a vapor uh, oscillator in Aarhus, and they're bombarded for 64 hours. And they put skin layers, as we do on the other titanium. These discs are in titanium, uh, sorry, zirconium. Zirconium? Yeah. Oh. Zirconium, um, the Danish intelligence service called me and said, Mr. Christens, for what purpose are you going to use zirconium? Uh, for this and this. <laughs> uh, you can't buy it pure, by the way. No. Because uh, zirconium, we use the ceiling around the plutonium in the nuclear reactor oh. to control the whole process. Oh. It doesn't absorb uh, any, any uh, particles, so it's neutral. Yeah. And it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs>
Amazing story. Yeah. And I'm glad I asked you, and I'm glad you're told. Yeah. And this is the driver in the lesser... Pro this is the driver in our new Exodus. Here you can see the split to carbon. And we make these in-house. So we have two layers of split to and a distance material, Nomex honeycomb, is a Kevlar material. So this cone has the weight of 4.9 grams. Uh, so we have an extreme stiffness. We have been stealing it from Formula One cars. Because if you go like just a few years back and saw the Formula One car in the curb in slow motion, you see the whole front wing was walking like crazy. Uh, now they don't do that in the same degree. This is have the same strength as hardness steel. So this is in the less expensive speaker, but it yeah. still looks pre pretty sophisticated. Yeah, driver. because we also, I mean, we are not fond of uh, aluminum. <laughs> I'll show you why we are not that. So aluminum is bad for music. Have you ever heard any music instrument made in aluminum? No, and all my wiring in my house from the roof down was aluminum, and I replaced it with copper, and it made a huge difference. In Good it. idea. Uh, oh, so much better. The problem is, I'll show you, uh, aluminum creates its own magnetic force called hysteresis or inner current. So when you drop aluminum voice cord down, from a, down in a magnetic gap, it's floating. You feel, see how much resistance we have here. Hmm. Most have that because it's a brake, making sure you're not burning your drivers. But when we spend more money, you can have a voice cord form in titanium. So we are not fond of aluminum at all. It just drops right down. Yeah. And try the do the other one again. And you're faster. It moves. You're more well, resistant. Yeah. You well, yeah. Of course. And it's a lot. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty convincing. Yeah. I'll take it. No. <laughs> so, uh, you know, even in, uh, I mean, this is a driver. We also have titanium washcut form in here, but we also have the copper rings and the copper rings also decrease inductance. So this driver we have in the X have a, in general around 25% of the inductance of any other dynamic driver, including the, those you have in your speakers. Wow. So that's why people talk about the X is how can you make a speaker sounding like this? Yeah, we have taken the technology from the M speakers. The, uh, of course, we have a much more advanced motor system. Uh, and we also have the titanium skin layer, but the, uh, the rubber surround is from Kurt Müller in Germany, who's doing the best rubber surround in the world. We also get the spider rings from there. So uh, the, uh, the tree, the, the membrane in the tree is the same, but we have a less powerful magnet motor system on it. Nice. So uh, this tree that has 94, and the X is at 90. Okay, so that series, how close, in all honesty, how close do you get to this? 70%, 80%, 50%? A lot. A lot. A lot. Let's say it this way. I, I don't know if you have heard them on the six four. I did. Yeah. Sounds I great. think uh, one of the best speakers we have ever made for the money is the X2 we have upstairs. Yeah, what are those costs? I forget. Yeah, it's 8800. Eight, that's right, 8800. Yeah. That's right. And then the stand ones are 6600. And Yeah, including the stands. Yeah. yeah. Those were great. Yeah, for 8800 bucks, those are great speakers. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we are very successful. I don't know how you do that. I don't know either. They yeah. asked Michael Dawson.
got it, shakes them. All right, so we're in the Fidelity Imports room. Steve, why don't you run us through? This is a budget system, right? Yes, yes. And you have how many rooms at the show? Four? So this year we did six rooms, six rooms, and it's important for us at Fidelity to every year do at least one budget-minded room. This year we have two. Um, so this one is our entry level uh, room, um, entry level only in price, not in sound. Okay. And we've got the Q Acoustics 5040. Beautiful speaker, they're $1,499 a pair. And where are those made? They're made in China. Q, okay. Q is a uh, English company okay. with production in China. Um, and we are powering them with a gold note integrated amp that is also a DAC and a streamer called the IS-10. It's handmade in Tuscany, Italy, and it's $3,499. Oh, so, so it's a Class D amp. It is a Class AB amplifier oh, really? inside there. It is. Um, How many watts does it push? It's 90 watts per channel. Really? It is. And it has the option for a second amplifier. Then you can bridge them and you've got 180 watt mono blocks. Wow. So you don't need to buy a whole nother one of those, you just buy the section, second amplifier. And um, if you were not doing analog, this room total would cost you $5,000 for a pair of speakers and a killer integrated amp with a DAC and a stream. Streaming, streaming DAC. What? Correct. That's, that's very attractive. And then you've got here a... Uh, we have a gold note turntable and the gold note power supply for the turntable. But you haven't hooked it up yet. We have not. Are you going to? Um, for you this through? room. Static. Static's fine. Yeah, we, we've got just a few pieces missing that we're waiting on. Um, as you can see here, we have the new Q Acoustics 5050. Wait, wait, let me come over there because I can. We have the new Q Acoustics 5050 and. Um, UPS had better ideas uh, on what to do with the second one, so we, we are they drop shifted. We are currently waiting for the second speaker. So, but that is the brand new uh, 5050, top of the range of the 5000 series. They're two thousand dollars a pair. Man, these prices are uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Q's always punches above its weight in terms of price point. And so what does this turntable sell for? This turntable is $2,199. And again, handmade in Tuscany. Yeah. Just saying the word Tuscany gives it something. Yeah, that's why I'm constantly saying it. Just, it's handmade in Tuscany, you just think of fine wine, good food. system while the battery charges. So these are, what's the model number of this? What's that? What's the model number of these? DP140 MK2. There's a tremendous amount of bass coming out of this. So can you play something on the track? Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you selling them or? Yes. What is the price of the reference like these ones? Um, this one was probably Okay, we are in what room are we in now? We're in the what room? 904. 904. And you are? Jonas Rantele with Perfect 8. Who I've met many times, but I want that they may not know you, so I want True. And you're a speaker designer? Well, I'm the owner of the company, but my engineer is the designer of the uh, Okay, so you're the, you're the front man. Yeah, I'm the front man. Oh, okay. Koli Avelimsik is, uh, is my engineer. Okay, so you're the face of the company. Yes, sir. And my microphone is going to be in this picture a little bit, but what can you do? Okay, so sh let's look at the speaker and yeah. let's talk about it. Yes, so this is the uh, Cube S uh, that we have been doing some enhancements on lately, some improvements on the crossover inside. Uh, we've been exhibiting a few times before, but this is the first time here in Tampa, and 
It's manufactured out of glass, not plexiglass. Yeah. So glass. it's real glass. Yes. And it's an omnidirectional uh, mid-range since the drivers are going like this. Uh, so actually the um, pressure max is actually in front of the loudspeaker, sort of contraintuitive. And uh, then we have a large tweeter that actually goes all the down, way down to 900 hertz for the crossover. And are you running through, you're running through you're, we're subwoofer? Yes, and I'm, I'm in this, this particular setup, I'm also running it with the sub, which is two, two 10 inch drivers, also the same principle uh, when it comes to how they, how they um, work. And then has, it has an integrated DSP and a two times 400 watt uh, amplifier in the rear compartment of the loudspeaker. Now, so if you if you run a, a vinyl rig, you have to digitize your vinyl to get it to go through the... No, no, the speakers are not digital per se, right? They're analog. Right, okay. Right, yeah. So this is just the amp. Everything is analog. Well, not now because I don't have a phone over. Right. But uh, I'm reducing a DAC and I go for to the uh, Ypsilon. Uh, that's a Maximinus, uh, Thrax Maximinus DAC. And then I go to the Ypsilon Phaeton integrated. And then... An analog output goes from there to the subwoofer and to okay. and to the loudspeakers, right? So, I get it. Yeah. How do they sound? Any good? Well, I kind of like them myself, actually. To I'm be sure honest, and I thought yeah. so. And so, so the, the glass it is a good ba is a good material for for a baffle. It's, it's, it's well, it's, the thing with glass is it has a couple of really good properties. One is the stiffness, right? It's very stiff. That's yep. good. Another one is the weight, which gives the loudspeaker inertia. And the, the third one is actually how the sound wave bounces on the surface, makes it easier, according to my engineer, I have no clue, uh, to calculate, you know, with exactly how the, uh, the, 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 um, the sound waves move around the loudspeaker, right, or how to speak, right, right. But it has one horrible property, and that is the ringing, right? It, it, you have a wine glass, bing, and yeah. it goes on ringing forever. And that's why we're using a lot of different techniques to get away from that ringing, to make sure that the, there is no vibrations inside the, the cabinet, right? And what are those techniques? Well, mm, I won't tell you all the ones secrets, but okay. I mean, some of them are due to the fact that we have opposing drivers. But in some cases, we're also using lamination in the glass to make sure that we are dampening it out. And how, well. do you, how, do you bond the, how do you bond these pieces together? With a very expensive glue. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, but I mean, as you can see, this is really, this is German craftsmanship at the highest level. We're a Swedish company, but actually we didn't find a glass manufacturer in Sweden that can do this. Yeah, you don't see any, you don't see the seams and you don't see where the glue is. Yeah, right? you don't see any bubbles in the yeah. seam, right? So this means that the tolerance of the uh, um, piece, individual pieces, has to be down to tenth of a millimeter to be really be able to create that. And good. who manufactures these drivers? Uh, those are CS drivers. The mid-range are, are a special unit that they produce only for us. And the tweeter is a CS tweeter? Yes, it's a CS tweeter as well. And that's a silk dome? Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and the, the stands are integral to this to yes. the speaker? Yes, so they are actually attached to the, to the speaker, but they come off for shipping, right? And they are very easy to take and off. And how easy is it for a child to knock that over? Uh, unfortunately, too easy, so um, if you have children, I would recommend that they don't go into the yeah, sound room. Yeah, children or dogs, not a, uh, not allowed. Uh, not allowed. Yeah, sure. All right. And how how well does the woofer integrate with this? Is, is it good? It's uh, it sounded good the other day when I was well. Here. It's it, up it, to it's you to decide. Right? Don't ask me okay. if it sounds so good because say, I'm going to say I'll yes. Say, but they, they put it like this. Yeah. A lot of people come in the room and they ask me, "Is the sound woofer on?" Yeah, that's Be good because they don't hear yeah. when it goes from the loudspeaker to the sound. Well, in my case, I was in here listening and I left the room. And I forgot to record any of this. That's why I came back Sunday morning to record this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Duh. All right. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for thank you. indulging me and running me through this. All right. Have a great rest of show. Thank you, Michael. I'm here, I, I'm here because I heard good things about these speakers. The well, what we've got here is the entry level, the beginning of the Vienna line. But the thing about the Vienna line, there isn't a... A budget line, a middle line, and a high-end line, it's, it's all the same, all the same quality of drivers and components straight through. Okay. The Haydn signatures are the fifth incarnation. Haydn has been alive his first time, and now five more times, thanks to Vienna Acoustics. Um, it's, a, it's a little two-way with a punch and beauty and transparency. At thirty-four ninety-five, it was the reason I had to be at the show so this year are, because I knew thirty-four hundred ninety-five dollars. Thirty-four ninety-five for the pair. You know what they say? But the people ask where Mozart is, they say he's hiding. <laughs> <laughs>
He's hiding. Okay. He's hiding. So, and, and then there was Beethoven, by the way, they dug up his grave. He and, he, and, he, and, he, and he was he was erasing his scores. He was decomposing. decomposing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It's, it's, cool. it's a hard thing these composers go through okay. after they die. So, yeah, th this is why I wanted to be at the show. I heard other two ways before here, and I knew what these things could do. And we had this great match now with the Ad Paris, which is a, a new line for me and a new line for playback distribution. So here you're looking at a $2,500 a Lollapalooza, which this? has a line input stage with tubes, like a preamp, if you will, a uh, 130 watt per channel RMS AB amp. It includes a photo stage, it includes a DAC, uh, amazing amount of connectivity. So, this is really. But how much as, is this? This system in here, as you're listening to it, is $6,000. Wow. And this amplifier is how much? 2,500, speakers with 3,500. That's yes. crazy. So it's it's a uh, it's, it's been a China. little embarrassing it's for some made, rooms. Made in China, right? Yeah. Designed in France, made in China. Yeah, and okay. let me tell you one thing about it: as you're listening to it, it's listening to you as well. Siri, can you turn on this sample? Oh no, no, I, I didn't mean to turn Siri on. Sorry, go away, Siri. I'm sorry. I was making a joke. It's a joke. Goodbye. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Sir, Siri's offended because of the. I know. Uh, you okay, do you have a little TX on the table? Just a little entry direct drive table yeah. with a Samico Oyster. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. I was told I have to come here and, and, and hear these speakers. So, so these are Amphion speakers from Finland. Finland. Now, you have been at shows before. Yes, we have been around for 25 years. Right. So and you this is not my first rodeo. I originally saw smaller speakers in birchwood ply cabinets. Is that true? You have seen those as well, but okay. we've had the Krypton also from the beginning. Probably didn't show it at the, at the particular show that we right. met, but uh, yes. Okay. So tell me about the speaker. Uh, Amphion Krypton 3X. Um, is a truly full range speaker that actually works uh, as we have uh, demonstrated here also in small rooms. Uh, goes to 21 Hertz minus 3, uh, has of course the basic Amphion things of low crossover point, time coherence, uh, control dispersion, works as a point source uh, even if it doesn't look like that, but in addition to that has also, if you look at this, Perforations to the sure. side, they're not actually yeah. only for looks, they have a function. Uh, be, we actually uh, uh, alter the dispersion pattern of the speaker to become a cardioid. Ah. Especially uh, functional and good here in, in Florida because you have a lot of houses which are concrete, uh, tile floors, uh, glass, glass, large glass windows. So, so what happens? Uh, cardioid is it's actually a microphone pattern. Sure. It's kind of like a fat bowling pill, if you wish, yeah. for those uh, viewers who who don't know that. And uh, and that of course eliminates the the wall ref reflections. So it works in in all kinds of of spaces. And you're using tube traps? A little ASC bit of tube traps? Yeah, exactly. A little bit of tube, of course, I and mean, you'd be a fool to uh, try to do a full range speaker. I use it myself. Yes, the excellent, excellent product. Yep. And, and these are, these are side firing woofers? There's a 10 inch long throw, 10 inch to the side, yes, okay. behind, the, behind the cloth there. And what do these cost in America? 24,000 per pair. Do they sound any good? You tell me. Let's play something. I will tell you. Okay. Right. Oh, what's the best seat? Uh, either one of those. Is Since we're early enough, I'll sit one row back. All right, now we're going to listen. Michael is a fan of uh, ERCs. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Play okay. Our, our ERC. This is an album by a cardiologist. So this is. <laughs> It's, uh, that's actually a very good description, I have to remember. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes uh, bad things happen at a good show, and in this case, uh, when I recorded this video, and the next one you'll see, my microphone went on the blink, the batteries were gone, and I didn't realize it. So this is like the open space at the hotel, uh, where everybody had breakfast every morning, which was kind of fun, and there were some rooms adjacent to this space, and... Uh, this guy set up records. There were very few records to be sold at this show. This is the only guy that brought records. And, you know, analog and turntables were not that big a deal at this show, unfortunately. There were some turntables, but it wasn't like a major uh, event, and a lot of big brands were not there. 
there were only a couple of brands at turntables that were there. Socorro was there and VPI was there and a few others. But um, I wanted to show this space because uh, it really was a pleasant place to hang out in the morning. Every morning people would have breakfast and you could sit with different people. And it was very informal, which made the show really, really fun. And I looked through some records, but uh, mostly I watched other people look through records. And so I just wanted to document this part of the show. And uh, of course, I talked through all of it, but I can't remember what I said. And now, uh, maybe I did look through some records. I, I tried not to look at any records because <laughs> I have enough records. I don't need any records. Anyway, so this is walking through. The, now, here is this room that I walked into. This is this is the Akora room. And this is some of the best sound at the show. No doubt some of the best sound at the show. But I can't play any of it for you. because Well, anyway. So, so VAC had their amplifiers there, Kevin Hayes. And uh, it's Kevin. And I don't know what Kevin did to his stuff, but it was the best sound that Kevin's ever gotten at the show. And there's uh, the VPI, the big Avenger. or um, It's the double truck one. I forget what it is. Uh, anyway, this is all the VAC preamps and phono preamp, the master phono preamp, and uh, and the big Acora speakers. And this is some of the best sound at the show. These things, first of all, they're absolutely beautiful. I'm going to get these to review and uh, I think most people agreed. And then there's Annie Besson. Annie Besson sung along with one of a uh, backing tracks for one of her tunes. And uh, I tried to record that because I thought that was really charming. She was she was actually very good doing that, entertaining people. But of course, I couldn't because the microphone was on the blink. So, but that's what she did. And uh, she's a very good singer and a mus real musician. So she made it work. You, you, it wasn't karaoke. She really uh, emoted to the crowd, and people really enjoyed it as she sang. Um, and you would have been able to hear it if the microphone had worked, but the microphone didn't work. Uh, later, I came back and just played records in the room, and the sound, right where she's standing, there, there was actually a chair set up, and you could sit in the chair and have the best seat in the house, and it was remarkable. Uh, a really great set, set of speakers. So this is one of the best sounds at the show. Uh, this and the Suncoast room with the uh, Clara speakers were fantastic too. And uh, there were some others that I'll write about when I write this up. But uh, this is the finale of the video. And uh, too bad you can't hear any singing because she was absolutely wonderful. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye. <laughs>